Hi, the SI Meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Friday, July 6th. Well, not all that bad this morning here in the Mid-Atlantic region, but it will get quite hot again this afternoon with temperatures going up into the 90s. And the heat wave looks like it'll peak on Saturday with 100 degrees plus in many locations here in the Mid-Atlantic region. It'll be a record breaker in many spots tomorrow afternoon. Again, with 100 degrees quite common throughout parts of the Mid-Atlantic region on Saturday afternoon. The good news, however, is that a cold front comes through, slowly works its way through Saturday night and Sunday, and by Monday, noticeable relief will be here in the Mid-Atlantic region and throughout the northeastern part of the country. In fact, it looks like temperatures will hold in the 80s for the most part for much of next week once we get through the uh, next couple of brutal, brutally hot days. I have a map here from Dr. Ryan Mowry's website that shows the temperature anomalies from the GFS forecast model uh, for the next eight days. This happens to be over the next um, uh, uh, 24 hours or so. All the oranges here represent above normal temperatures and out here in the western part of the U.S. some colder than normal temperatures. Let's take a look and put this in motion and see what happens over the next eight days. Here you go, you get this uh, basically being replaced by colder than normal temperatures throughout the central and northeastern part of the country and it's a significant change in that it lasts not, uh, for much of next week perhaps even into the next weekend so once we get by these next 48 hours or so and again it'll be brutally hot with the peak of the heat wave on Saturday it looks like significant relief throughout the northeastern part of the country all the way down in the central plains for much of the next week starting on Monday so at least we have something to look forward to now tomorrow again temperatures could be a record breaker in many parts with 100 degrees likely in a good chunk of the mid-Atlantic region but significant relief is on the way and again this is from Dr. Ryan Mowry's website it's a GFS forecast map of temperature anomalies thought I'd show one other interesting map from uh, Dr. Mowry's website this is again from the GFS from last night's 06Z run and it happens to be the temperature anomalies, surface temperature anomalies, for the next eight days on average. And what's kind of interesting here is, and this is a global perspective, what's kind of interesting here, if you take a look at the equator on south here in the southern hemisphere, and that basically from here on south, look at all the areas in the southern hemisphere, which is now going through its winter, where it's colder than normal. Here, much of South America, colder than normal, much of Australia, uh, even portions here of Africa colder than normal and very significantly uh, of, of interest here is throughout Antarctica uh, quite a quite a cold pattern here so it's kind of interesting that in the southern hemisphere while we're baking here in the north at least over the next eight days the southern hemisphere has a lot of colder than normal areas now notice up here in North America by the way the next eight days the hottest in terms of relative to normal will be confined to the western part of North America and again we're, we're headed for a much cooler stretch of weather here in the Central Plains all the way to the East Coast beginning on about uh, Sunday or Monday and that should continue throughout the next week but I thought it was kind of interesting that the Southern Hemisphere and occasionally the Southern hem Hemisphere winter gives us an idea of what the Northern Hemisphere winter can be like so we'll continue to monitor this situation over the next several months. Well, let's get back closer to home and take a, a quick look at a couple of GFS forecast maps for the United States. This is from last night's Zero Z GFS run, and this is for tomorrow afternoon, Saturday afternoon. And again, I want to point out we often look at this 20 degree isotherm here as an indicator of uh, extreme heat, and this is all the way expand, expanding right through the Mid Atlantic region for tomorrow. And again, this is the, probably the hottest day here in the Mid Atlantic region, one of the hottest days. Uh, probably uh, certainly of the summer and in the, uh, several of the past summers too. This this will rank up there with one of the great days in terms of heat with many areas reaching 100 degrees right from New York City on down through DC. No precipitation here during the day tomorrow. There are, uh, certainly is a threat of a thunderstorm tomorrow night and especially on Sunday as that cold front slowly sags through the mid-Atlantic region. Meanwhile the pattern is continuing to change out here in the a southwestern part of the country, Colorado, for example, has had several weeks of heat and drought, and there's a major pattern change going on to cooler, wetter conditions for the state of Colorado and much of the uh, Rocky Mountain regions beginning this weekend and continuing right through next week. Now here's a GFS forecast map for Sunday afternoon. Notice this area of 20 degree 
uh, temperatures plus is shrinking and it's it's shrinking and moving south and east of the mid-atlantic region and that's as the cooler air starts to move in it'll still be hot on sunday it's kind of a transition day still hot not quite as extreme as saturday probably reaching 90 degrees in many mid-atlantic locations but the real noticeable relief will occur by monday as this high pressure out here over the northern plains slowly makes its influence felt here in the northeastern quadrant of the country as we'll have north winds on monday and temperatures most likely confined to the 80s, not only Monday, but it looks like for much of next week as well. So brutally hot for the next couple of days with the heat wave peaking on Saturday here in the Mid-Atlantic region, but then significant relief coming Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week. That's it for now for the SIWeather.com. I'm the SI meteorologist, Paul Dorian.